Shabbat Shalom. This Shabbat, we read Parashat Vayelech. These final weekly Torah portions are read during the High Holidays, and therefore we usually combine lessons and topics related to the holidays of Tishrei into the study of the weekly Torah portion. In a few days, we will fast with all the people of Israel the fast of Yom Kippur. In Jewish thought, this is the most fearful and sacred day, the Day of Judgment. According to Jewish tradition, the story of Vayelech is said on the last day of Moses' life. The tradition states this from Moses' statement in the beginning of the parasha, I am now 120 years old. During the parasha, Moses is commanded to come with Joshua to the opening of the tent of meeting, where the leadership officially transfers over to Joshua. In the tent of meeting, Moses receives a prophecy from God. In this prophecy, God tells Moses that the children of Israel will stray from the path of the Torah, and that all the evils and curses that are described in the previous parashot will occur. In our parasha, Moses writes the Song of Moses and gathers all the children of Israel to hear it. This poem is a prophecy and a reminder of what will happen in the future. We will read it in next week's Torah portion. Moses finishes speaking to the people of Israel and goes to finish writing the Torah. So Moses wrote down this law and gave it to the Levitical priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord into all the elders of Israel. The Torah is not in the heavens, nor is it beyond the sea. The Torah must be close to each and every one of us, so that we as a nation will always remember God in our history as a people. This commandment is private and personal, but at the same time, it's also national. It connects us to the people of Israel, to the God of Israel, to our past, and hopefully to a better future, provided, of course, that we keep these words that Moses wrote in the Torah, about which he warned again and again. The words of warning are uttered repeatedly by Moses with the intent to prevent the people of Israel from sinning. Moses brings all the tribes to him and gives them the Torah, the testimony, the song, in the hope that the warning may succeed in causing the people of Israel in the present and also in the future not to sin. The truth is that Moses knows. He received it in a prophecy. It will not help. At the end, the Israelites will corrupt themselves and stray from the path. For I know that after my death, you are sure to become utterly corrupt and to turn from the way I have commanded you. In days to come, disaster will fall on you, because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord, and arise His anger, but what your hands have made. But Moses also knows that this is not the end of the story. God will not abandon the people of Israel. After the, the periods of punishment, rebellion, conquering enemies, and various exiles, God will reassemble them the people of Israel, and bring them back to the land of promise. And we will try again. Will we, this time? We and our children be prepared to keep the written covenant of God's Torah? Or will we also decide not to keep the words of this covenant? As it is written in last week's parasha, I will be safe, even though I persist in going on my own way. Today we say we do not need the Torah. It is not what God really wants. I know what God wants. God wants my heart, my faith, my worship. God does not want lists of what to do and what not to do. Now on a personal level, this statement is 100% correct. As far as we, as believers, are concerned, the essence of the Torah is to love God and to love our neighbor. That's it. But on a national level, this statement is wrong because we must preserve our national identity. We must 
pass on to our children the history of the nation and connect them to the heritage concerning the whole episode of the exodus from Egypt, to connect them to the patriarchs of the nation, and thus to link them to the promises made to our forefathers. What I'm trying to say is that when I fulfill the commandment, let's say of the sukkah, or blowing the shofar, I primarily fulfill the mitzvah in order to educate the next generation, to connect them to the rest of the nation, and to the collective memory of the Jewish people. The Torah is designed for the people to live in a certain level of morality and conduct towards those around us. The Torah is for a community as a whole. Our long and painful history teaches us that those who left the Torah in the traditions of Israel, their children abandoned their identity and their connection to the people of Israel and to the future of Israel. This is the reason why we fast on Yom Kippur. Now, I have complete faith in the atonement of the blood of Yeshua the Messiah, who has pardoned me and cleansed my life in the best and most perfect way. But we fast because we are not only private individuals, we also have a family, and it is our duty to connect the family to the people of Israel. I'm also part of the Jewish people, and as such, I participate in the na nation's fasting and prayer together. We are begging God to remember these people for the good. We have to have compassion for us, to remember the promises and the graces of the patriarchs, and to give us another opportunity to correct ourselves and to live in the way that pleases God. We sometimes think that asking forgiveness is a personal matter. Everyone is supposed to think of the mistakes he made in private and repent. We are not some, supposed to make a public celebration of our private problems, our personal sins. Even though it usually works that way, on Yom Kippur, asking for forgiveness becomes a collective effort. But it's deeper than that. It's much deeper than that. On this day, we talk about our weaknesses and share our failures together as a nation, or even as a community, not as individuals, but rather as a Messianic congregation, a believing and supportive community. Together, we gather our strength and rise up and change our lives in brotherly love, something that our connection to Yeshua calls us to do. What great humility can be found in the ability to recognize a mistake, to repent, and to re-examine our lives and our decisions and march towards an improvement. This very idea is, is big. God gives us the possibility of repenting from our bad decisions and our mistakes. Whatever happened, happened. It's not so important now, because if we really want to, we can start all over again. In short, this is the essence of Yom Kippur, which is why it's considered the most holy and important day of the year. On this day, we stop time. We stop the race of life to reflect on our own actions and to contemplate our own path. Are we on the right track? Do we live in accordance with the way we believe? The idea of atonement of sin is in the center of Yom Kippur because on this day, atonement will be made for you to cleanse you. Then, before the Lord, you will be clean from all your sins. Nevertheless, there is an issue here that needs to be resolved. According to Jewish tradition, Yom Kippur atones for the sins between us and God and not for the sins between us and our friends. In other words, it is impossible to come on Yom Kippur before God and to ask Him to forgive us for the sins I've committed towards a certain individual. According to Judaism, one, one must go to the person himself and ask forgiveness for the sin. Yom Kippur atones for transgressions between a person and God but for transgressions against one's neighbor, Yom Kippur cannot atone. 
until he appeases his neighbor. In my opinion, this is Yeshua's teaching. Yeshua commands us to first be reconciled to our neighbor and only then to come and stand before God. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember, your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, and then come and offer your gift. I think this is a good and healthy lesson for us today. Before we come to the congregation to praise God, let's cleanse our conscience against those we heard during the week, a family member, a friend, or a co-worker. Let us ask for His forgiveness and plead with Him. And then we will come with a clear conscience to worship God rightly and truly and to seek His face. Shabbat Shalom. And may we all have a meaningful fast.